Playing video games may just make you a genius. Valve's new card game is dead, and Blizzard punishes the bad guys. My name is Force, and this is Gaming News on YouTube. I don't know why I keep twisting. Can I stop at any point? This is all under my control. Yes! This first story is absolutely fantastic. All those years of everyone telling me playing video games is bad for me, is wrong my brain, is destroying my vision. Turns out it might just make my brain bigger than yours. <laughs> A new study published by Business Insider claims that playing video games may increase your brain's gray matter and improve how it communicates. And you thought dropping out of college to play video games was a bad idea? Who's laughing now? Should probably get a few more details though, so let's check this out here. According to the result of a study published in Nature, gaming could possibly increase the volume of gray matter in the brain. Researchers recently studied the insular cortex regions of frequent gamers and those who didn't play ga video games regularly. The study found a correlation between playing action video games and increased gray matter in the brain. Is it true? Does it really make me smarter? Researchers from the Chinese University of Electronic Science and Technology and the Australian Marker, I can't read. I guess video games didn't make me that smart. The study looked at 27 regular video game players described in the study as action video game experts. <laughs> How do you get that title? The participants in the expert group were all recognized participants of regional or national championships of League of Legends and Dota 2. Okay, so they're basically like professional players. By comparing the AVG experts and amateurs, we found that AVG experts, I can't get over that title, had enhanced functional connectivity and gray matter volume in insular subregions. All it says is that these pro players had higher amounts of gray matter in the region that they tested compared to people who weren't professional players. So that could mean that playing video games professionally or playing a lot of video games increases the gray matter. Or it could just mean that they are professionals because they have increased gray matter. It's not really the best study to say, hey, video games increases your gray matter, makes you a smarter person. I'm a genius because I play a lot of video games. Whether or not playing video games makes you a genius, <laughs> I'll probably just go with not. Video games do have benefits outside of just being entertainment. You know, you see a lot of people talk about helping relieve social anxiety or, or just helping with cognitive skills in general, hand-eye coordination, memory. There are certainly downsides to playing a lot of video games. It can be a time waster that has you neglecting real life responsibilities. That has definitely been the case for me in periods of my life. I think nowadays I'm much better at managing my video game time and my, hey, let's make sure we get real life related shit done time. At the end of the day, it is an entertaining time waster that might be pulling you away from other activities. So just make sure you get that balance done and don't say, college mom i'm gonna play video games it's gonna make my brain bigger probably not the right thing to take from this particular article <laughs> next up in the news we've got valve's card game artifact it's really not doing that hot which i guess is entirely surprising i don't feel like i've heard a lot of people talking about the game recently but a new article here on get hip says that valve's artifact ended 2018 outside of steam's top 100 most played games the player base for the new dota card game has already dwindled down to only a few thousand and concurrent players. It became clear that Valve was going to have a hard time at selling Artifact when fans were left disgruntled by the Dota card games reveal at the International 2017. <laughs> I remember I remember this shit. This is look at this. This was the reveal for the card game. There's some claps in there, but half of those are definitely boos. They didn't really care that a new card game was coming out. So Artifact did have a strong debut. It was peaking at number four of the most played game during its launch with 60,000 concurrent players. However, the article states, Artifact's debut was relatively low when compared to the peaks of Valve's other top games on Steam in 2018, such as Dota 2, which had 845,000 players, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which had 747,000 players. Now, I think normally, this wouldn't be such a big deal or even something that I'd bother talking about. Games come out, they're popular at the start, and then they die over time. Given that this is Valve, and Valve has a history of making games that just are insanely popular. I mean, again, Dota and CSGO, those are games that, since they were released, have been and remained popular to this day. So obviously this is not what uh, Valve was hoping for. They were clearly looking to replicate the success that Blizzard have had with Hearthstone. But one of the biggest differences, of course, is that Hearthstone's free to play, and 
Artifact isn't. It, to this day, I just checked, it costs $19.99 if you want to play Artifact. And then on top of that, there are additional microtransactions in the game. It's going to be interesting to see if Valve can turn things around for Artifact, but so far, it's not looking so good. Can't believe I'm talking about this next story, but here it goes. Blizzard punishes 18,000 Overwatch accounts in South Korea for toxicity. Blizzard's banning a bunch of people uh, who are just uh, not playing nice, essentially. We're talking about things like throwing games, toxic chat behavior, just, just doing things that they're basically not supposed to be doing. I used to talk about this a lot when I covered Overwatch, just as, I mean, that was basically the only thing I did for several years. So back in that time period, when Overwatch was the only game I covered, there were numerous occasions where Blizzard came out with these huge ban waves. Sometimes it was for bots and hacking. It became for toxicity. That was something that they we're clearly trying to crack down on, and it looks like that struggle continues. One of the more interesting things out of this article is actually the mention that part of their monitoring toxic behavior and punishing players extend outside of the game to clips shared on social media, YouTube, and Twitch. Now that feels a little bit far reaching, I gotta say, but I imagine this is only for super high profile cases. Like if you're just a regular person playing the game and you say some dumb shit online, probably not gonna get banned, but if you're a regular offender and you're constantly getting reported, or specifically for high profile people, because I know like even professional players in the Overwatch League, it was a big problem for quite some time. It felt like every week you'd hear about a new pro player just saying some really dumb shit. You fuck pussy. I don't know, it, it's up to the game companies how they're gonna respond to this stuff. Uh, toxicity in gaming, chat, and online games has big, been a thing as far back as I can remember, frankly. I remember when Xbox Live first came out. Shoot a gun, I dog. I how to fucking shoot a gun, you fucking Ryan Shield. What else do you want to Oh, Ryan Shield! I'm a pussy that use Ryan Shield! If I ever seen you in New Hampshire, I'll fucking kick your ass. Why would Are I get a New Hampshire? Are you fucking pussy? <laughs> <laughs> just the, the most horrible stuff was said in chat, and it almost always pertained to your mother. <laughs> Bad, fool. Stick up for yourself. That's my mother. I don't give a shit who it is. Tell her you ain't getting out the fucking game. We doing <laughs> some shit. <laughs> you can disrespect your mother like that. I disrespect you, fuck boy. Now don't tell her you ain't getting out the game. Fuck you. It's a tough problem. I don't necessarily have an answer. I've just grown accustomed to I'm numb to it, essentially. Just call me whatever the fuck you want. It also doesn't help that I'm, I, I've been reading YouTube comments for eight plus years. Oh boy, if you want a low self-esteem, start uploading YouTube videos and read what people say about you. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Look, I don't know. It's it, it's 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 a tough problem. It is a really tough problem on games or just online in general in comment sections on social media. I don't know. I don't have the answer. What I do know though is that Skyrim has been released on a new platform. Uh, Skyrim Monopoly is a real thing. This isn't actually terribly new, but I just saw this post on Reddit and I started laughing. <laughs> it, was, it was just perfect. Now I went back and I saw there's a bunch of videos uh, published last year of people who had Skyrim Monopoly. So again, this isn't a brand new thing, but yeah, just so you know, Skyrim is available on yet another platform. And that pretty much does it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's gaming news. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this a bit more often, especially now that I'm finally back to working. So let me know if you like this video. Hope you do. Also, I heard people kept yelling at me about zooming in my last video. They said, Force, stop zooming in your videos. We don't let you, people or people would watch your videos if you weren't constantly zooming in on your face. Like this?